Yes guys, what's going on people? Welcome back to my personal channel. Welcome back to another match review for you guys today. In this video, we're going to be talking about Krasnodar nil Chelsea 4. And please don't get tricked by the scoreline because it really wasn't a 4 0 performance. We didn't start really smashing into them until we made this change at the, around the 70th minute. But we are going to talk about that because we've spoken for the last few games about Frank Lampard and his game management and sometimes making the wrong decisions in games or bringing on the wrong substitutions. Guys! Frank Lampard had a plan B today and he showed it and guys, I'm, I'm telling you after this game, please let's never see 4 2 3 1 again. I was happy with it towards the start of the season but I'm not convinced by any pivot anymore. I think playing with the three in midfield with Mason Mount and Kai Havertz as the two progressive midfielders looks a lot better but we're going to delve into this a bit deeper in this video. So before, you guys have, before we start this video, if you guys haven't done so already, smash that like button hit that subscribe button as well and press the bell notification button as well to be the first guy to know whenever we release any new content because guys i need every subscription i can get on the road to 20k because it's a slow and long walk so i need all of you man backing me press that like button and that subscribe button if you guys haven't done so already it'll only take a second of your time and let's get straight into this review right krasnodar nil chelsea four and if we look straight at the lineup, which I'm going to leave on top of the screen right now, it was a good lineup and it was relatively strong and it was something that I was happy with. We had Ziyech making his first start after his injury against Brighton. We had the return of the Jorginho and Kovacic pivot, which meant Kante was getting a rest because we did think that N'Golo Kante needed it. He looked really off the pace over the last few games and his passing range was, was half the reason why we were turning over possession. And Callum Hudson-Doy was returning back to the lineup and we've been calling him to start for the last few games of Mason Mount playing on the left hand side and on paper it did look like we should be dominating them and even though the scoreline did look like we did dominate them it was a very even game for long periods and we were getting worked for long periods of that match but Frank Lampard guys give him the credit where it's due because we've given him the criticism when we need to and I think there's fans that have also been really really pushing the criticism because some of them are just old sorry fans or some of them never really backed Lampard from the start but Lampard showed game management he showed good game management in this game he made the right substitutions he changed the formation and that's half the reason why we started smashing these lot for the last 15 minutes and we were able to get those three goals we finally look like we found our formation. I do know it's early days, but I'm going to say already, please play the 4-3-3 against Burnley because all that's done is expose what the real problem was. And the real problem was not that we were playing the wrong guys in the pivot, it's that we were playing that pivot in the first place so deep. These guys couldn't progress to play, and I'm not convinced by any pivot anymore. Jorginho and Kovacic, the one that we were calling for ages, came on, didn't work. It didn't work today and it was half the reason why we were so slow and so stagnant in possession and we were barely able to create anything and Timo Werner was just struggling to find service yet again or Callum Hudson-Odoi was in acres of space calling for the ball and he wasn't getting it again. And it's been the same thing with the Jorginho Kante pivot, where instead the issue was these guys press too forward and leave too much space exposed. Or the Kante Kovacic pivot, which is the same problem because they're both ball progressors and they're going to do the exact same thing anyway. Jorginho, I'll give him credit where it's due. He at least covered well defensively and he was that extra man at the back whenever we needed to because they were countering, they were countering us a lot during that game. And we kind of got away with the fact that I think we're a much fitter team than them. And I also do think that came into effect towards the end of the game. That's why they petered out and we were able to get those three goals. But towards the first half, they were counter-attacking us a lot. And I was thinking, if this is a Premier League team, we'd be conceding a lot of goals at this point. Or it'd be Edouard Mendy just saving us again and again and again. Which was like he did in this game anyway. But it would have been with much more dangerous shots. I think these guys counter-attacked us, but they didn't counter out, uh, they didn't counter-attack us at pace and that's half the reason why we're able to sort it out eventually eventually we're able to get players back into position or someone was able to figure out what they were trying to do because they weren't moving quickly with the ball their movement off the ball wasn't quick either there was a bit of a golfing class but i will give krasnodar credit where it's due i do think they had a very good performance and even though they lost 4-0 they should hold their heads up high for a team with six first team players injured and a team that's eighth in the russian league right now they gave us a game for long periods and for the first half they probably did look the better team than us 
We had the early penalty, which I, I don't know what kind of madness happened with that. A lot of people are giving Jorginho a stick for hit for missing that penalty. It's not that deep. He hit the post. He didn't go wide or anything. You know Jorginho's penalty is near bulletproof. The only keepers that have saved it are Edison and Allison, two top quality goalkeepers. Not this, what's his name? 13 reasons why reject. What's his name? Tyler. This guy, he, he people were trying to give him credit for it on BT Sport and it literally just licked off his ass after hitting the post. It was unlucky from Jorginho, but that was it. Callum hudson got the first goal and I do want to say it did well for his confidence, but he didn't have a great game either. I thought he was very wasteful on the ball. His decision making was all over the place and it was just pass back to Chilwell or lose the ball for most periods. It wasn't a great performance from him, but he got a goal, so I'm happy for that. It was a massive goalkeeping error, but you know what? We've had so many goalkeeping errors over the last year and a half. It's about time some karma came down our way, so I don't care too much about that. Second half, it was really more the same until we switched back, until we switched up in the 70th minute to 4 3 3. Hacking Ziyech, by the way, I do want to say, man of the match. I'm going to talk about him a bit more in my player ratings. But that first half, he was dragging us through it. The only real attacking threat was coming through Hakim Ziyech. He was having a couple decent chances, beating a few players here and there and trying to make chances. But he was the most creative player in our team by a mile today. And if that's him when he's just come back to full fitness, I'm very excited to see the, mag the magic that this guy proves in the Premier League against Burnley on Saturday. But like I said, until the 70th minute when Frank Lampard made those those substitutions and brought on Tammy, Pulisic and Mason Mount, the game was just dragging on for ages. Uh, they were trying to press us and trying to counter-attack us. And they were getting a couple chances in, but it was just low quality all the time. And it just seemed very easy for Edouard Mendy. Which is also credit to him because he had another amazing performance. He kept a clean sheet and he is such a presence. I will be real. If you're a Premier League side that is about to face Chelsea very soon, don't bother with crosses. This guy is fearless. He will throw his hands in front of everything. And if you're in the way, you're getting clarted. There's no way you're getting near this guy guy and again as like we said as soon as we got to 70th minute we made the three substitutions Pulisic had an amazing impact on the game as well he had an impact on all three of the goals the first goal with the foul for the penalty which Timo Werner converted amazing finish as well by the way he hit that with some serious venom the uh, Hakim Ziyech goal as well he had brilliant link up with Timo Werner for that and a good composed finish from Hakim Ziyech as well fourth goal he just needed a goal after the end of that. It was good play from Tammy from Tammy Abraham. Finds Christian Pulisic in space and it's 4-0 Chelsea. We're going to go into player ratings before I wrap up this video. Sorry, I just had to get that down. Starting goal, Edouard Mendy. Uh, probably give him an 8. He was there when he was needed a couple times and he always did his job. Like I said, he was an amazing presence in the box as well. Stuffed out a lot of their corners and crosses. And yeah, it was another amazing performance from him. And I'm giving him an 8 seriously because you can see the gulf in class between him and Kepa and Willy Caballero. And it's just so good to have an actual decent goalkeeper between the sticks. So Edouard Mendy gets an 8. As for Equator, I thought he was a bit poor going forward. There was a couple times where Mateo Kovacic or Hakim Ziyech was looking for the ball in space and he wasn't receiving him. Defensively, I thought he was solid though, so I'm going to give him a 6. Kurt Zuma, solid performance. Good couple key blocks. There was this one moment where he did some mad karate kick and cleared the ball about 40 yards. Good long range passing, but again with Rudiger, I think Zuma to Rudiger was the most, was, probably had the most passes in the game by a long shawl. It was just, just sideways, sideways. But it was a good solid performance from him, so I'm going to give him a six. Same thing with Rudiger. Both of them had a solid, concentrated performance, and they were there when we needed them to be there, so I'm going to give him a six as well. Ben Chilwell. Four was a bit of an off game. Crosses were not the same as we've seen from him over the last few weeks. And the passes weren't as progressive as well. So I'm going to give him a five. Jorginho as well. So I'll go for a four or a five. I think I'll give him a five because I thought he was good defensively at least. And like I said, he, put, he had that extra body in defense that we needed. But the passes were just too slow. Too stagnant. There was a big period in time when I was seeing hudson Doy screaming for the ball in space. And Jorginho, that's usually meant to be his bread and butter. He's meant to be able to look at his head up, see a pass happening before anyone else does. And he's able to release that. But it was poor from him today. So I'm going to give him a five. But it ain't as bad as Kovacic. I'm going to give Kovacic a four. He had like one or two good through passes. 
other than that, very ineffective. Good to get the ball out of pressure, but on the ball, we just weren't progressing the ball at all. We weren't driving well with the ball forwards, and we were just struggling. I thought we had a poor performance. I'm going to give him a four. Hakim Ziyech, man of the match. I'm going to give him a nine. I'm just going to run through a few of his stats. One goal. 35 out of 40 completed passes and 87% passing accuracy. Four shots on target with one chance created. One key pass, five out of five accurate long balls and seven recoveries. ZH came to play today and he was dragging us through that game until we switched to 4-3-3. Amazing performance from him. Deserved the goal as well. I'm excited to see what he does against Burnley on Saturday. Nine for him. He's the man of the match. Kai Havertz, decent link-up play. There was periods where he didn't look as involved in the game, but like I said, his best period was settled at the end when we switched to 4-3-3 and he was progressing the ball from there. He looked like a much better number 8 than a number 10. Him trying to move the ball in space, he looked so dangerous and he was always a threat, especially compared to him at the number 10. I still think he's good there, but I think at the number 8, he just looks like a different demon right now and I would like to see it against Burnley, so I'm going to give him a 7. Timo Werner, we struggled to find him in the first half. But he ended up getting the penalty and a good assist for Hakim Ziyech towards the end of the game. So he gets a 7 from me. Moving on to the substitutions. Tammy Abraham looked very involved in the time that he was there. And he had good link-up play with Pulisic for his goal. So he's going to get a 6 from me. Pulisic gets an 8. So seeing as we're talking about substitutions. Because he came in and the involvement was just mad. Involvement for all three of the goals. So yeah, he has to get a number 8. The only reason why he don't get man the match was because Mendy was there the whole 90 minutes and Hakim Ziyech was just performing like a madman. Emerson looked pretty decent down the left-hand side. Can't really say too much because I don't think there was too much that he did, but runs off the ball were good. I'll give him a six. Mason Mount as well for the good change-up in formation and how great he looked back in midfield again. So that's why I said stop slandering Mason Mount. He's not a poor player. He's just overplayed and out of position. You've got to give it to circumstance. I'm going to give him a 7. He had an amazing performance when he came off the bench. But guys, this is the end of my player ratings. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G. And I'll see you guys very, very soon. Take care and up the chill.